Nobody wants a messy house or a sink full of dishes, right? Likewise, nobody wants a messy credit profile or one that's full of false or negative listings. Whether there's something that's factually incorrect on your credit report, or you just want to do some scrubbing to make your credit a little bit cleaner, there are a few things that you gotta do before disputing with the credit bureaus. If not, then you're probably just wasting your time. In this video, I'll be teaching you all the steps that you have to take before repairing your credit. What's up, winners? My name is Nam. If you're new here, welcome. Here we talk all things personal finance and credit. Start now by subscribing so you don't miss out on any future videos. If you have or have not tried to repair your credit, then this is the video for you. You might've bought credit repair templates online or found free ones. I actually do have some for purchase and I have multiple courses on this topic. So you don't have to buy from me, but if you do enough internet research, I'm pretty sure that you can find some free online. But if you want a step-by-step -step process or support the channel, I do have them in the description. But regardless with any template that you use, either you bought them or create them, there's gonna be some extra steps that you need to take prior to disputing delinquencies or negative items off of your credit report. Because if you think that you just bought a template or finding a free one online that will magically remove the delinquency from your credit report after one letter, this is usually not the case. While it is possible to remove negative items within the first round, it usually takes multiple rounds of letters and persistence to actually get items to be removed. That's why most credit repair agencies take anywhere between six to 12 months to remove delinquencies. And that's for items to actually remain off of your credit report. Sometimes certain agencies promise they can remove it within 30 days or less. While this is possible as well, sometimes you just see this pop right back into your credit report 30 days later. Credit repair does not have to be that complex and there are specific strategies that can improve your odds, but it is never 100% guaranteed. I would never recommend anyone going to an agency or buying any type of product that guarantees them that the negative items will be removed. That's just plain right out wrong, if not illegal. Before getting into the nitty gritty, let's start off by listing why it is important to have a clean credit report. With a messy credit report and a turn a low credit score, lenders will be very nervous in allowing you to borrow their money. Yep, they have trust issues. This means that you will either be stuck with very little money to borrow or they allow you to borrow, but at a higher interest rate. One of the more overlooked aspects that are affected by your credit score is your insurance and your rent. Specifically, car insurance are affected by credit scores and studies reveal that bad or low credit scores can result in increased insurance rates. Landlords, they also check their potential tenants' credit scores so they can assure that their tenant can pay for their rent. If you're in the market of buying a house, the bank will also check your credit. So for any big purchase in your life, you wanna make sure that your credit report is as accurate as possible. So first things first is obviously to get your credit report to find errors that you want to dispute. One in five people have an error on the credit report and this actually affects your credit negatively. The top three credit reporting agencies is Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. And all three of these, they offer one free credit report every 12 months. So the way to get these credit reports is from annualcreditreport.com. While this is the lowest cost option, each credit report that you get from each credit bureau is gonna be laid out a little bit differently, so it can be a tad confusing. Additionally, these do not provide credit scores. So that brings me to today's sponsor, ScoreMaster. ScoreMaster is a one-stop shop that provides you with monthly three barrel credit scores and reports, money management tools, identity theft insurance, plus so much more. They are an interactive and simple platform that allows you to get better financial and credit insights. Rather than looking at your credit report individually from each credit bureau, they organize everything all in one place so you compare all three at a glance. They list out all of your negative items, inquiries, collections, and public record information. From there, you can actually handle any inaccurate information right through their portal. Another feature that I like is called Score Views. This is where they take in all of your active credit card accounts and calculate your utilization rate. Based on how much you pay and when you pay, then you can predict of how much your score will go up. So if I owed $15,000 like this test account, and if I were to pay off $3,000 in credit card debt, I can see an increase of around 23 points. Rather than just being a monthly credit monitoring service, it gives you a lot more compared to similar companies. So if you wanna get a streamlined service that gives you further insight on your financials and credit, go check out ScoreMaster, link in the description. Now, whatever route that you decide to get your credit reports, once you get it, just make sure that you look for inconsistencies and inaccurate information. So if you see incorrect personal information, payment history, delinquencies, hard inquiries, then you know it's time to dispute some of these items off of your credit report. So before you actually start the disputing process, you wanna freeze these third-party agencies that collect all of your personal information. 
This will better your odds of actually removing these incorrect or derogatory items. Because whenever you dispute any item with the credit bureaus, they're going to be reaching out to these third party agencies to verify if this information is correct. The thing is, is that they're not going to be doing their own research and contact the creditor or lender to make sure that the information is correct, even though by the law, they're supposed to. They usually just take a shortcut. Now, if you were to freeze this third party agencies, it just makes their job more difficult. Plus it forces them to do it correctly. The biggest five third party agencies is going to be Nexus Lexus, SageStream, Innovis, CoreLogic, and ARS. All of the links to these companies will be down in the description below. So all you would have to do is opt out of all of these services. So what you are essentially doing is just putting a freeze on these agencies from collecting your own personal data. So whenever you dispute items, this prevents the credit bureaus from accessing this information. So LexisNexis and SageStream recently combined forces. So you can actually freeze both of these agencies all at once. And the other three, you would just have to do it separately. Now, once you go ahead and freeze all those third party agencies or bureaus, the first thing that you would want to do is to correct your personal information. The key reason behind this is that negative accounts or inaccurate accounts may be tied to incorrect spellings of names and addresses. Whenever you fix this incorrect information, you have better odds of successfully disputing items off of your credit report and it will also help your credit score. Based on my experience in working with clients, removing multiple names and addresses actually can increase an individual's credit. The main reason behind this is that the perception of stability increases when you only have one name and you only have one address. If you only have one of each, then it will seem like you're much more financially stable in the lender's eyes. Even though this is a small and simple change, it can have a positive effect on your credit score. So let me give you an example. Let's just say that your name is Miguel Oscar Ortiz. And that's exactly how you spell it. Depending on your background and whether or not you get married, if you have extra last names, it may be seen differently on your credit report. In the Hispanic culture, it is not uncommon to have two last names, one from the mom's side and also one on the father's side. So in this situation, for Miguel Oscar Ortiz, sometimes they may label Oscar as a middle name, even though it should be the last name. Or if you see Miguel Ortiz O, this is also incorrect and it should also be fixed. Or you may see Miguel Oscar Ortiz connected to one another. Again, this is also incorrect and it should be removed. However, there are some problems that you may run into. If you have any active accounts, such as credit cards or loans that are tied to incorrect data, then you may not be able to remove them unless you correct them through the lender. This will work best with closed and inactive accounts. Now, once you correct your personal data, this is where the actual work gets done. Now, depending on how many items that you want to dispute, the general rule is to dispute no more than five items per credit bureau. For example, if you have three collections accounts with Experian and one collections account that shows on TransUnion, you would need to send one letter to Experian and a separate letter to TransUnion. Now, this does not mean that you can only dispute five items. This just means that per letter that you send out, you should only have five items per round. I recommend disputing at least once a month. So if you have additional items, just leave it for the next month to work on. When you mail in your dispute letter, you may want to include a portion of your credit report. Now, if you're going to do this, just make sure that you include the right credit report from the right credit bureau because it makes no sense to send a TransUnion credit report to Equifax if you are disputing with Equifax. Okay, so now you know how many items to actually place on your letter. Let's discuss a little bit more about the letter that you need to send out. Now, when it comes down to what you actually put down on the letter, I really would not stress about it too much. It doesn't have to be complex. It doesn't have to have any legal jargon or anything that says 609 on it, because as long as you can provide as much information as you possibly can to identify who you are and the problem that you're trying to have them fix, it should be more than enough. The thing with credit repair is that usually the first letter is never going to be enough. You're going to be going through multiple rounds of information saying that the verified is inaccuracy or delinquency. This is where you would have to follow up and have them provide proof of how they verified it. That's why when you buy a letter package, it can be an easier step rather than typing out everything and just trying to figure out what to say. Something that you got to know that is very true is that whenever you send in your initial letter, it does get scanned through a system called eOscar and it will just code it and figure out how to resolve it automatically. There's no one at the credit bureaus who's going to be manually reviewing your letter unless the system itself is not able to identify what you're trying to say. So whenever you are typing out your letter or using a letter template, just make sure that you provide all the necessary information, such as your personal information, why you're reaching out to the credit bureau, the accounts that you are disputing, and the reason on why you think it is incorrect or the reason why you are disputing this delinquency. As long as you cover all of those bases, you should be okay. All right, so we're almost there. Before you actually send out this physical letter, either you typed it up or handwritten it, 
make sure you attach the correct documentation. Now, whenever you decide to send out your letter, you should provide all the information that the credit bureau needs to verify that you are the person that you say that you are. This includes copy of your driver's license, possibly your social security card, and a proof of address. This typically can be just a credit card bill or a utility bill, just something that the credit bureaus can prove that you live at that address. Because if you miss any of these verification documents, this will just make your case much longer because you would just receive a letter back saying that, hey, we need proof of your address or a copy of your social security card just to further identify who you are. Now, you can also include a page of your credit report. I know that some people's credit reports are extensively long, so you can just highlight or circle a part of your credit report and attach it to your letter as well, but this is not always necessary. As long as you have the account information, that should be more than enough. Now, the more proof that you can back your claim, the better it will be. Meaning that if you have receipts or documentation that can prove information is incorrect, this will further help your case. So before you send this off, just make sure that you do not have a wet signature. So if you have handwritten a letter, just print out your name. Do not sign it. Because if there are any signatures on negative accounts, such as loans or anything like that, they could always tie that verification of your signature to that account. Now, when you decide to send this letter out, it's up to you if you wanna use certified mail. I know that this just comes at an extra cost, so it can cost anywhere between one to $2 for every letter that you send out. So the biggest use case with sending certified mail is that if you wanna bring the credit bureaus to small claims court, if they now reply to you, within 30 days. This can take a little bit longer since the time it takes for them to actually receive the letter and actually send it out. So I would actually give them up to 45 days. But according to the Fair Credit Reporting Act, you can actually sue them and take them to small claims for not giving you a response in a timely manner. Now, it's really up to you if you wanna take them to court because in itself, it's extra time that you would have to take out your day to actually do this. But where sending certified mail would help is that if you were to make a complaint with the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. This essentially is an organization that overlooks all financial services and reporting agencies. This will help further your case if you need to get it pushed higher. Now, based on my own personal experience and having my own agency, the results by certified mail versus first class stamp, there's really no difference. This is also the case with other credit repair agency owners that I've spoken to as well. Now, once you've done all the steps that I laid out for you, this is when you would just send out the letters and let time do its thing. Of course, there are other strategies to make the result quicker, like if you were to call in if you wanted to remove hard inquiries, but for higher ticket items such as collections, charge-offs, late payments, and bankruptcies, it's just gonna take more time than that. As I said before, credit repair takes time and persistence. So if you do not get a successful removal during the first letter, you would just have to continue trying and using different strategies. I do have many videos on this specific topic, so you can hang out with me more over here.